Welcome to Color Theory. This is your first uh, supplemental video for assignment properties of color. Uh, as you may have noticed, this is updated from earlier supplements that are going to be still available to you. Uh, this course has been recently changed and we are uh, looking at some dis different aspects of color in this first assignment uh, compared to the previous course. So please don't be confused by the supplements that are posted uh, earlier. Uh, hopefully these will be clearly marked uh, for you. But if you have any questions, please let me know, of course, at any time. Uh, but let's go ahead and jump right into this. Our first uh, requirement of this assignment is to look at gradations of hue and max at maximum saturation. So what we need to look at and what we're doing doing here at this point is looking at the full screen of Photoshop. I will not do this in all the supplements. I am going to do this at this point just to familiarize you with uh, our setup. Uh, this is our toolbar. You can adjust this any way you would like. Uh, this is going to be our color window which we'll become very familiar with as time goes on. Uh, you'll often see me use layers and navigators, uh, the navigator, as we uh, proceed in later weeks. Uh, but at this point I'm going to use the full window just to, so you're familiar with everything that that's going on at this point. Uh, hues at full saturation, so we can go ahead and go to the swatches, and these are the basic hues. Uh, they give you basically primary and secondary and RGB. This, uh, depending on whether you're for print or web design, uh, we'll talk about that individually in the class. I'm just going to start with a basic green here, and what you'll notice when you pick that is that the S and B values are at 100%, and something that's important to note is the difference in the way Adobe uses the term saturation. If you look this up, this S uh, short um, abbreviation here is standing for saturation. Uh, and if we bring up, I'm going to go Control U. Uh, here we go. It's going to bring up the hue saturation tool, which I'll show you later on how to locate. It's going to bring up hue, saturation, and lightness. And you'll notice here the saturation is change is a change to gray. So basically if we had a color selected we could make it fully gray uh, by going minus 100. Uh, but here you'll notice that the slider is changing to white. So this is a difference, a key difference that we need to acknowledge in the software and how it's uh, using this term. Our uh, use of saturation is going to refer to gray, not as to white as HSB sliders are. So this is a key difference that needs to be noted. Uh, full saturation is referring to no modification of the hue, so no addition of white or black. So when we're using hue, fully saturated hues, one, one thing we can do is use our magic wand tool. Now I'll often use the shortcuts with magic wand here. Uh, if you leave it, your um, pointer on any of these, you'll give the shortcut W. Uh, you'll see me use these. If there's any question, please let me know, but I'll use the magic wand uh, by just using the shortcut W. Uh, tolerance up here can be changed to select the range of the color. Uh, it's at default at 32. You see I have it lowered at 24. Again, we'll talk about that a little bit later. We're starting off at hue 120, which is a f uh, fully saturated green by the S and B values, as I kind of noted. Uh, and then we're going to go ahead and uh, switch the paint bucket tool here with the shortcut G. Uh, so we can go transitions. What I expect in this assignment is the, the gradation of hue to be even gradation. So you can set that up whatever you want it to be. Uh, these progressions need to be even. The transitional steps or progressions, whichever way you want to kind of uh, word that, do need to be even. So what I'm going to do here is fairly standard 10 degree uh, transitional steps uh, just to make it fairly uh, clear for you to see. So I'm going to magic wand again, uh, paint bucket tool, and this green range you'll notice are very difficult to see. And this is one of the things that we'll use later is this eyedropper tool to help us see this. Uh, it'll make it very clear. Uh, for us to evaluate these assignments later as we go into writing critiques and talking uh, during the participation. So there's no question about the application of color. Uh, we don't do a lot of subjective uh, observations. We really want to be factual in what we're seeing and what we're uh, commenting on each other's work. This is not really a subjective uh, you know, you're not going to want to say, oh, well, I think it looked right. We're going to want to say, when we look at this, we can see clearly this is a fully saturated hue 120. And, and I'll help you with this as we go forward. So uh, don't feel overwhelmed if you're not clear at this point. But then you can go and say this was a clear progression of 10 degrees, transitional step if you prefer, uh, fully saturated again. Uh, and then the next step, again, 
transition or progression of 10 degrees, and then in this, in this third step, a progression of 10 degrees. So you have this progression of 10 degrees, and then this would continue on uh, all the way out. And I'm going to go ahead and pause this and complete it for you so you can see it. So as you can see, I've finished this progression of uh, 10 degree transitions of the hue. They're fully saturated. But what I want to do at this moment is kind of bring back up this hue saturation tool. And we've introduced this. We're going to continue to talk about this. But something that's interesting about this tool is we can change uh, all the hues. As you may have noticed, the entire uh, scale here has been selected. And I'm going to add 30 degrees to this. So basically what that did is shifted all the hues 30 degrees. And if you remember, we started out here at hue 120. This will see, now we can see it's at hue 150. And this, uh, those 10 degree steps have been maintained. So we're going to see that that even progression has been maintained. So it's 160, 170, 180. Uh, don't want to be redundant here. But you can see the saturation has been maintained. And that's something that's uh, very useful about that hue saturation tool. And we'll continue to talk about that more. But that's something I just wanted to kind of touch upon at this point uh, that can be useful to you later on. There's often many ways to complete these assignments in Photoshop. These supplements are only providing you one way. Uh, you're welcome to explore other ways. And as I've kind of just shown there, you can do this with the HSB sliders, or you could have done this by using the hue saturation tool. Uh, of course, there's many other ways, uh, and you're welcome to explore any one you wish. So moving on to this next one, we want to make a gradation of value maintaining a fixed hue. Now, there's a number of ways, of course, to do this as well. Uh, ideally, I'd like to see a use of tints and shades, as explained from the lecture, and I'd like to see, again, the progression be even. Now, there's a problem here because you have uh, the kind of an uneven number of steps here. Now, if you look at the example, it's, it's using, and let's switch to that for a moment, it's going to use it's going to use five steps to get to a fully saturated red and four steps to black so it's not very not an even transition but it will meet the criteria for the assignment uh, to exceed the criteria i'd like to see you extend that the number of steps there's nothing in the assignment that says you can't extend this so let's go ahead and show you how to do that now so let's go ahead and back to our Photoshop. And one way to do that would be to select this uh, area. And I'd like to see you do this cleanly. And one thing that I do in this supplements is often do this uh, very quickly. Uh, I'm trying to do this all within 15 minutes. It's not ideal. Uh, but I also don't want to have very long, tedious videos for you. And that's part of the benefit of the tutors is that they can come in and kind of uh, go over this a little bit better with you. So I'm going to go ahead and lay that out there. Now that I've extended this to an 11-step progression, uh, there's nothing wrong with that. You can also do it to make this look cleaner. Uh, I would do all of these as an 11-step progression. That would be uh, ideal. Uh, but again, this is up to you. This is a choice that you have. Uh, let's go ahead and fill in our, our transition here of what color we want to use. Again, personal choice uh, is fine. Uh, again, I would consider maybe doing something for you uh, kind of a unity of the entire assignment. Uh, use one hue for initially for all of them. Uh, let's go back. One second there. Yeah, I wanted to reselect that. I want to pick up my hue with my eyedropper tool and I want to lay it in all of those. So continuous is unchecked. It's in all of them. So we're starting off with our tint. This will be our center one. This is the our sixth one in is the center, uh, the end going to black, uh, beginning white. You can do that either way you want. Uh, so let's go ahead and start with the white. I'm going to add a stroke around this just because I want to. I know as I make this white, it's going to become lost. I'm going to change the color to black. So I just went to edit, stroke, uh, black. Uh, one pixel is fine. I'm going to do that on the outside to maintain the original shape of my box. Uh, this is not a requirement. It does help maintain it. Uh, I'm going to bring up my hue saturation tool because I want to do this slightly differently. And I'm going to do the lightness at 100. So if you're doing... Um, transitions and let's go back to our sixth one so our first transitional step or progression in a tint scale we're basically doing five steps so we're doing and uh, kind of slow this down a little bit I don't want to jump at this too fast I'm kind of hoping that you've watched tints from the older video before you've jumped into this but 
transitional steps in hue saturation tool is basically done by 100%. So it doesn't require uh, some of the math that HSB sliders require. And it also deals with hues that are not fully saturated regardless. So it'll do the transitions for you uh, very easily. So in this case, we want to divide this 100, which it does all transitions within 100, uh, by 5, because we have five steps. We're going 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 here. So we do 20 units. Each step is going to be 20 units. So our first step has to be that 20. And then the next one, of course, would be 20, 40, 60, 80. So that's where it keeps it a little simpler in the hue saturation tool compared to some of the other tools. So our next one here is 40. And this will give us our very even transitions. And we can talk about how numerically we can see these values in the RGB sliders. Uh, I don't want to get into that now because I can be a bit overwhelming uh, starting out with that kind of information. But uh, the math behind it can be very interesting for those who want to know about it. Uh, I have some files that kind of detail it. Uh, it can be helpful to know, especially when you're trying to justify to somebody that doesn't understand why the progressions are correct. Uh, and we can go into that at a later time as need be, but that's a little bit more advanced than we really need to be uh, covering at this point. So going into the lightness, we're, as you decrease, you want to go negative numbers. Again, we're doing the same progression. This is why the progression is, uh, this transitions here are even on both sides. That's why we extended it. So we're doing negative 20, negative 40, negative 60, negative 80, uh, then negative 100. So it should be pretty straightforward. And then with this side, since it's going to be black, we don't really have any issues here. For this final one, we don't need to extend it out. Again, though, I would recommend extending it out if you want to exceed all the criteria. Uh, we'll go ahead and select them all. And this is a two-step process. Again, referring back to those original videos can be very helpful. Let's go ahead and select this with our eyedropper, uh, fill them in with the paint bucket. And then we can just go ahead and select our individual ones with our uh, magic wand and this time we go to our saturation tool we have in this step uh, nine transitional steps basically uh, 11 in this case so it's uh, 100 divided by 9 gives us 11 we've got to include that extra unit in there somewhere uh, we can talk about that individually it's covered in the other video uh, I usually throw it in on the end so just a negative uh, 100 for the last step So hopefully at this point you're seeing how easy this is to use the hue saturation tool, negative uh, 33 for the saturation. The key to this part is though, and I'm going to pause this and roll the uh, and finish this out, is the change in value. The fixed value is the key. So as you can see, I've finished uh, desaturating this changing to a grayscale, and some of you may notice that there's a change in value here. If you do not, that's fine. All you need to do is image mode grayscale here and what you'll see there is that it's getting darker and this we talk about more later in the week but this needs to be corrected we need a fixed hue and value uh, so what we'll do is go back and again that hue saturation tool uh, does wonders for us so we are going to go ahead and magic wand select this area uh, go to the color window switch it to a grayscale slider and then we're going to bring up our hue saturation tool move it to a position to where we can see our grayscale slider and then we can go ahead and check the value. At this point, uh, our icon will switch automatically to an eyedropper tool. It'll measure the value at 17% K black. And then we can go and check. And we can see it's increased to 22. We want to basically adjust it. Once we've checked the one we're changing, uh, we can see our changes in the grayscale window. And we can, if you can see that in the video, we can see it lowering as we increase the value in the lightness slider so we can get it to change to 17. Uh, and we can do that again. And this is a pretty significant change there uh, in the in the progression. Uh, but when we change the value, we often, often are sacrificing uh, the, the color. Uh, and that's part of the issue here when we're making changes uh, in saturation is that there's often a loss in color to maintain that fixed hue. And that's part of what we're going to be exploring more in this next uh, upcoming assignment. So something to explore. I'll do one more here real quick before we run out of time. Uh, those older videos deal with this more in depth, but if you have any questions, feel free to let me know. We'll talk about this some more as we 
go on. And of course, if there's anything else, let me know. Hopefully this gets you a good start and we'll go from here. Thanks.